Oh, hang on, hang on then, hang on. No. Did you know? That's not going to be the intro for this, okay? Put the well, drum I've down. had a lot of people saying, Oliver, we haven't heard the drum in a couple of weeks. So I just want to show people that it's alive and well. Oh, that's a funny drum. Right about the drum. It is, yeah. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Uh, Privet. Moi. Hey, I say that. Uh, ciao. Konnichiwa. That's not one. Halan. Uh, oh, what was the new one I was going to say the other day? Oh, Shalom. Is that a new one? It's not yeah, new. So no, I did, I did. Whatever, whatever way you want to say it, everybody, welcome. Hello to the normal, not normal podcast with myself, Oliver Phelps. <laughs> no. It's like no. what I did there. With him, James Phelps, and me, Oliver Phelps. And I just remembered what I was going to say. Aloha, as they say over in Hawaii. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. As you say, James has just been trying to confuse everybody he seems to be in one of those moods today i am i'm feeling a bit cheeky but that's because we've been speaking to a very dear and old friend of ours so in this series we explore what normal is and if normal even exists and so this week we are speaking to a very good friend of ours we are joined by alfie enoch who played dean thomas in the harry potter films now obviously alfie became a very good friend to both of us over the years and we've had a lot a lot of fun memories working with him but since harry potter he's been a very very successful actor uh, you might have seen him work as wes gibbons in the long-running hit series how to get away with murder and also uh, sorry, how to get away with murder which was a massive hit and I can't wait to ask him about working on that, also staying in an American accent when he was filming. But his dad is also an actor, William Russell, who was actually in so many big productions during the 50s, 60s and 70s. Notably, The Great Escape, an amazing movie. Superman, an amazing movie. But he's also the first assistant in Doctor Who. There's a did you know. Very, very good did you know. So yeah, as Jane said, we had an amazing time be so much so that I think if we put all the content all together, we'd be this show would be well over two and a half hours long. So it's been really, really good fun. So we thought there's actually a couple of things that you may need to know uh, when we talk about it. So just a few phrases, which if you don't know them, that's OK. Here's what they mean. So a per diem is a money allowance, which is given to you when you're on a works trip. Don Quixote is Spanish literature, pretty much. If you're going to look at any Spanish literature, start there. And punting, which is a relaxing boat ride. Uh, and punting, which is a relaxing boat ride where you use a long stick to create momentum. Rambling is a thing what a lot of people do over here in England when they go on long walks or long rambles over the countryside. As you can see, we talked about a lot of random stuff during our chat with Alfie, but we had such, such a great time. It was so great to talk to him. Uh, also, again, like everybody else we have seemed to be speaking to, we never knew his story in getting into, especially the Harry Potters, and then going onwards from there as well in his career. So it's really interesting learning how he got cast as Dean Thomas in the first movie and subsequently went on to play him in all of them. But then obviously, like I said, since he's gone on to do very many great film, TV, and especially theatre work all over the world, it's absolutely fantastic to see a friend doing so, so well. And I'm really glad that he was able to join us today. Exactly, exactly. It's been absolutely fantastic. So, guys, we're sure you'll absolutely love it. We did. I mean, I've, to be honest with you, we were speaking for that long. It's quite funny the amount of stuff that we started talking about one subject. You know, when you start talking about one thing and then you end up talking about something totally, totally different well that's kind of where this whole chat with Alfie went today and we're so so happy with it yeah and also just we, we brush on it slightly but Alfie Oliver and myself actually played for the same cricket team I have my hat there in the background on my telescope the Bunbury cricket team uh, which is a charity cricket team and we played 
well, when we're allowed to before times that they are came about. But it was we actually talk about how the one day we were playing with Alfie, the next week we turn up and he couldn't make it because he was away filming. Turns out that that job ended up being how to get away with murder. So it was quite funny that the one week he was playing cricket with us, the second week he was no longer with us. He was in the States becoming a huge TV star. Uh, but before we join in with Alfie, Oliver, what have you been up to this week? Well, this week has been very interesting because the weather's been actually getting quite nice. I've been out and about, going for walks and everything like that. And I was very, very surprised to see the amount of people who find it very awkward. If you ever see couples going for a walk, how awkward people can be holding hands. I don't know if you ever noticed that before, but there's like a weird way that like people seem to hold hands or some people don't. I actually saw a couple, a fairly elderly couple, who you would have thought all their years together, they would have worked this out by now. But this man was literally walking along and he literally went, oh, you're, you're doing it wrong again. You're doing it wrong again and, and walked off. Kind of a highlight of the day, really, seeing that. Well, you really do live life in the fast lane, don't you? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's just all, it's nothing but go here. Nothing but go now. And just, yeah, just enjoying stuff, um, getting into a lot of good interaction with people. And the one thing I would say, guys, is that I really, really appreciate, and I think I'm speaking on behalf of James as well, all the lovely kind words that have been sent to not just us, but the whole team um, behind the Normal Not Normal podcast from everybody, from saying how much it's helped you going through you know, a, a bad time if you're going through it or anything like that, or if it's just the cherry on top of a brilliant week um, and everything in between. We just want to say thank you so much for all the love, so much for all the support, because without you guys, we wouldn't bother doing this, really, would we? No, we've had a real great time doing it, especially, like Oliver says, getting messages from everybody saying about how much they enjoy listening to it, how it's an escapism, how just how it's great to be part of a community because I know that you guys have started speaking to each other as well which is really nice to see and hear about so thank you so much for all the support and we really hope that you're enjoying it as much as we are making them exactly and one other thing as well I need to add in here I noticed that some people seem to be getting a bit offended if we don't say hello in your native tongue mm. um Thank you for bringing that up. And if I've got to be honest with you, if we remember what you said when we come to do it, we will definitely try it. We're always up for trying new things. Uh, but please don't be offended if we don't say hello in your native tongue because we missed it. There's quite a lot of ways to say hello. But anyway, guys, we're not going to tease you anymore. Hope you're doing absolutely amazing this week. And hopefully this is the start or the end, whichever time you're listening to this, of an amazing week for you. So, guys... Hope you enjoy the next. I don't even know how long I'm going to say this is going to go on for. Guys, we hope you enjoy this episode with Alfie. Take it away. Cool. So, Alfie, thank you so much, mate, for joining us today. Just thought I'd give you a little heads up, right, as to what we're talking about. So, basically, in this whole series, we're basically exploring what the word normal means. And basically, in terms of, we're kind of coming to the conclusion that normal is just what's relative to you. So in one way, what would you say a normal looks like for you? Maybe maybe let's start right at the beginning. Say pre-Potter. Like what would be say like a normal Sunday before we met? Pre-Potter, I was I was gonna yeah, I was gonna say so long ago. I was gonna say you've come to the right person for normal. Nothing too interesting seems to happen in my life. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna be an expert on this, on this topic. Um before Potter, what was normal? Um and a normal Sunday was just like me. I mean, I was how old was I like 11 when we started doing Potter so it's I wasn't up to anything very interesting probably like a normal Sunday was just like sitting at home maybe if my parents managed to convince someone from school to come play with me I'd have some company otherwise I'd just be sitting on my <laughs> twiddling my thumbs I don't know like, <laughs> pretty much that or just like reading or something um actually one thing that kind of jumps out from being from when I was really young and this kind of went through all of my childhood was like during during like school holidays like Easter or Christmas I would sit at home and uh watch like old movies with my dad my dad uh was an actor and he uh was in like the great escape and like movies from way back when so I'd always kind of sit down at the foot of my dad's armchair and he'd be like oh that's blah 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 and I'd be like oh cool yeah oh that's good it was just basically just a captive audience for him to talk about when he was working. 
did he tell if you're watching films that he was in did he tell you that you were in that he was in them or was it just you'd see him pop up on screen oh that's actually quite a good question i never really i i don't remember him ever telling me but then it's quite an amusing thought to be like so just so you know we're going to watch this film and i'm in it <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird conversation to have isn't it i mean so i, I always think if, that bridge i always think if i have a a kid one day I'd be like I wouldn't if Potter came on I wouldn't tell them that I'm in it just, <laughs> <laughs> just watch them sit there again just, yeah. but then you run a risk right I mean what happens if uh, they don't recognise you and you think oh boy <laughs> time's been cruel time's been cruel yeah, I to me I remember, I remember in the a corner. couple of years I remember a couple of years ago maybe about two years ago I was around at my uh, my friend's house and I'm uh, god god godfather uh, to two of his two of his boys and they just started to get into watching the the films so he would be how old would he have been the one lad he'd have been about five at the time uh. and they were they were watching the philosopher's stone and we sat down and uh, I came on I came on it was when we were at King's Cross and I said oh that's that's me mate there and he looked and went you're very old <laughs> I was going to pick my heart off the floor and just be quiet <laughs> for the so rest neat. of it. <laughs> yeah. And there's like no filter in it now at all. <laughs> so well, there we go. James, yeah. you've got that to look forward to. I wouldn't, I'd, I'd give them, I'd give them disclaimer at the beginning. Just so you yeah, know. Yeah, me. It was a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> really long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if my dad, I, I, he must have told me not to be harsh on him, but like, for example, The Great Escape, that would have been, what, like in 1960 or like there or thereabouts? My dad is is old. I mean, he's 96 now. Obviously, when I was a kid, he wasn't that old. But, I mean, he was like white-haired and old. And he's like a young, fit, you know, Air Force, someone or other, navigator or something in the, in the movie. So like, I might not have recognised it. Um, but for me, it was just one of those things of knowing... Um, so I, I don't know, it gives you like a closer relationship with the thing, right? I mean, even though you got rinsed on the <laughs> list, you're going to I mean, to be honest, it was like cool. Excited. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was quite cool because there's never been anyone who I've actually known since they were like a dot. Uh, and then like, I probably met him when he was probably about three or four days old. And I used, I used to see them virtually weekly as well when they used to live a bit closer. Um, <laughs> yeah, getting back on track. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, well, so while we're talking about that, your dad obviously was an actor and been in the uh, industry. So you knew all. So did you have much sense of the entertainment world before then because of your dad? And if so, was that the reason why you wanted to go into acting, or were you like a few of us where we saw the Potters coming up and we thought, let's give it a go? That could be fun. Mm, yeah, it was. <laughs> Let's give it a go. That, like, Let's understand best, it really best, bad. Yeah, I was going to say the best cunt <laughs> in history. Oh, I might as well. I'm not doing anything for the next ten years. <laughs> give it a try. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was. I was definitely more in the camp of that. Looks like fun. I want to do it for a living. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I knew because I knew acting was a thing. I guess it sounds like such a like banal way of putting it, but I think that's a real thing. I think a lot of people don't consider it because maybe they don't know people who are actors or that you know, it seems like a really distant, far off dream, something that happens to other people. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I knew that was a viable career and maybe naively because obviously it's not viable for everyone and it's, you know, you're lucky to be working at any given point. But, um, but I already had that desire to do it. Um, and that was definitely, that was definitely from, from him. But still, I didn't have much of an idea of the industry. Do you know what I mean? I, I had this kind of notion that that would be a fun job. Um, and I was kind of empowered to feel that it was possible. But I wasn't like, you know, a pro, you know, I didn't know about auditions or agents or anything, really. I mean, before Potter, I'd done one thing, um, which was a play, which was amazing. It was, a, it was a play that was at Shakespeare's Globe, and then it did a tour. Um, and I, like one of the first plays I remember seeing was my dad was at the Globe in the opening season. And so that was a really kind of cool thing for me. Cool. But um but it wasn't like I, I didn't have a sense of the industry in any kind of way. You know, I mean, mm. I, I hadn't like, yeah, I hadn't like 
like Dan or Devon who had like worked before and done, you know, like TV or film. And I don't know, it wasn't like that for me. I was, it was, it was all still pretty new. I had no practical kind of sense of what it was. Yeah. In terms of like going, obviously for, for the audition and stuff like that, was that an open call or was that a set audition for to play, to play in D Thomas in particular, or was it just any, any role? No. So it wasn't. So there was a couple of things with that. It was, um, it, they had an open call at my school and they basically auditioned everyone because which was Westminster was that yeah that was Westminster yeah. underscore so that was like the prep school before that which, um, which for those of you who are listening is one of the best schools in the country <laughs> Alfie's just going to modestly nod that back. off but it's <laughs> put me on blast I was just trying to hope that wouldn't come up <laughs> and that was uh, Westminster school was it was Westminster like, oh, school is it yeah, yeah. damn damn <laughs> I've got like massive guilt, big, big privilege guilt. Um, <laughs> no, so, so yeah, so they came, so they came to my school, to the, to the prep school um, and basically auditioned everyone. And we had all just started reading Harry Potter basically. So it was, that was all a massive deal. Like everyone in my year and pretty much the whole school maybe had like read the first book and maybe the second book had like just come out. Maybe if I'm not getting my chronology the right. First, the first three and the fourth one was just on its way. Really? Was it? No. Yeah. It was because I remember we, it, yeah, it was, when, when we were going for the audition, the fourth one was, was coming out because I remember we had read the first, the first book we listened to on audio, Stephen Fry, right. when you used to get the, the tapes, the yeah, cassette tapes, yeah. which come in like six huge, like in like a ring binder, pretty much. <laughs> and then there was the second book. Oh, it was an hour uh, of Stephen Fry in the audio booths. Um, just like yeah. respect to that, man. It was really, really good. <laughs> really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the first three were definitely out. When we were ah, out. That's interesting. Because my, my memory was, I think maybe I hadn't got the third one yet, but I had read the second one. And the second one was like the first book that I stayed up all night reading. Mm. I was like, just completely gripped. I just remember the bit where they kind of entered the Chamber of Secrets. I was like, this is terrifying and amazing. And it was like blowing my little mind. I was just like having the best time. Um, so when they came with the auditions, you know, that was obviously massive, massive news. But despite the fact that I'd already done this play, I didn't audition because I thought this is never going to happen. Do you know what I mean? I had, I had like a couple of thoughts about this. Firstly, I was like, this is going to be a massive, massive film. It's, they're not going to cast any of you idiots. I was thinking about all my friends who were auditioning. <laughs> and I was like, and they're not going to cast me either. <laughs> At least I'm not so idiot that I think they're going to. And so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't audition. Um, but it just so happened that the play went on tour and then someone saw me in the play and then, so I got asked to audition. So when, when I then got a call like in the summer, I was like, oh, I was like, well, that's, that's nice to be asked. You know, Happy I was days, like, yeah. okay. Did you go so back this- in and were you, were you saying to all the other kids, they were like, <laughs> so you all auditioned, didn't you? And I didn't, <laughs> but I'm in it <laughs> yeah. and you're not. I'm- it's funny that you. Oh, that's no, just interesting. Yeah. Nah. In, all, in all serious though, were, were there any like jealousy or anything from from any of your mates because of um, that, or was it more you jammy sod? It, yeah, it was, it was more it was, you jammy sod. Was definitely. it? Was it? Was it? Was it was, did a bit more of it come about when you were leaving the room, going like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, probably, you probably have to ask them for a more honest reaction. Um, but I, I don't know. I wonder if to some. I don't know, I guess in some way, maybe this is me like tooting my own horn a bit, but I don't know if it sort of made sense to my friends in some kind of way, because they knew that already by then, like I wanted to be an actor. I think that was some, so I don't think, I don't remember anyone else wanting to be an actor at the age Mm -hmm. of like 10, 11, you know, and, and I'd already done this play at the Globe and like we had something at my school called the reading competition. I always took it like super seriously, and everyone else was just like, whatever. What about is that? It. So, what is that? <laughs> the reading of this. I've got so a good actually, idea what it is, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me break it down to you. No. Yeah, this um, is why Oliver failed at school. <laughs> <laughs> the Same reading school. competition. Interesting. Um, <laughs> What is this reading? <laughs> Audio books is how we do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was going to say, if it's not Stephen Fry, I'm not interested. No, no, it's hard. No, he, he'd pull out like a Mr. Men book. <laughs> <laughs> too, too many words in that. Spot the dog, Spot the I dog. think. That's not... <laughs> Spot the dog. That's great. I'd love to do a, a dramatic read. Maybe you could do that in uh, do that for us later, or, or, or release that. An audio book. Get your That'd be quite good. Where's have you ever, heard, audio have you ever heard though a spot the dog book though? He's not there. He's not. There's there. no plot to it at all. <laughs> I think this Joking. is brilliant. Surely it doesn't exist in audio book form yet. You're taking the piss. Not yet. <laughs> I think there may even be one in the house. Shall I go and find one? <laughs> So, this is what the people want, mate. This is <laughs> it's what the people want, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about generating good content, and that is that is good content. That's good. While away the lockdown hours, um, boy, oh boy. Um, well, so I was going to break break the reading competition. Sorry, but yeah, go on. Um, for those who didn't get the get the gist. Um, no, but actually, secretly, I'm delighted that you've asked me this because the reading competition, even though it was something that I engaged in at the ages like in year four, year five, and year six are some of the things I'm most proud of because I won it every year. And I don't usually get to say that because mostly people don't ask about, you know, the reading competition at Westminster Underscore. Um, so, so what, was the school? what was the school again? Yeah, okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> um, so basically it was, you had to pick a passage from a book. You could, they would have a theme every year. So it'd be like, I don't know, town and country or life and death or whatever. Um, and you'd go away and you'd pick a passage or a poem and you'd read it. And for the first round, you read it in front of your class. And then some people made it through the next round, you did the next round, da, 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 da. I don't know, it was like three rounds or something. The final round was in front of the whole school. It was like a special assembly and you had to know it by heart by then and you had to kind of perform it, sort of. Um, yes, yeah, so you, you were literally performing a monologue when you were, what, eight years old in front of the whole school? <laughs> Yeah, it get, if it didn't sound precocious enough anyway, um, I no, did. but when you break it down, like when you yeah. put it into like it's that, a, it's not a re- I expect, I am, when you said reading competition, I thought it was like my school where you sit in the, like, they, 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 basically <laughs> the teacher wants half an hour to herself. So you get, <laughs> you get a book and as a, this is how good I was at school. I thought, great, it's half an hour of nap time. <laughs> yeah no i used to do the same thing right i used to i remember i remember we started when, when we were in secondary school this was they used to do like english one one day a week an english lesson so a whole hour would literally just be reading and they'd never test right. you on the book they'd never ask you questions on it it would literally just be quiet time reading a book and i remember going to school having to go to school didn't have a book to read and i saw lying on the side my dad had kevin keegan's autobiography so i just picked it up Right, and just sat there for about a whole term, pretending to read this book. I read it. I read it probably about what fifteen years later. Kevin <laughs> <laughs> Keegan's <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny The worst thing is me. the teacher never said that's a bit heavy, isn't it for you? Oh, that's a bit, a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Special I love interest. It. I love it. Still stuff. going for it, yeah. I know I that he had an injury. I know we're going completely off topic here. I know that he had an injury when he was at a club, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with his they? leg. And it turned out that his first car, the the clutch pedal, was so stiff that he hurt his left leg. No. And it was only when someone went to move his car, they were like, "God, oh, that's stiff." Yeah. <laughs> that is such a bizarre injury. Talk about like weird. Imagine this football club's invested like that much money in it. Like, <laughs> yeah, a Ford Capri ruins your career. <laughs> you imagine that happening nowadays like Leo Messi. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Faulty clutch, he's out for... Maybe that's what happens at Virgil van Dijk. That's why hamstrings go all the time. <laughs> Since automatic cars, the hamstring injury has gone down a lot. <laughs> anyway, back on topic. Sorry. So you can... okay. Back on topic. Yeah, the reading competition, my great... And my great victory. Why did I even get on the reading competition? I was just trying to shoot on it. Very here, proud so of it. Say. Rightly so. I am very, I won, I won three times. We had the reading competition every year. So, and, and in the first year, uh, my monologue was, again, it sounds absurd because I was like eight years old, um, was uh, from Henry V. It was... <laughs> What? <laughs> it was the St. Crispin's Day speech. So, I mean, maybe someone was doing Spot the Dog and maybe that's how I won. Because, like... <laughs> I imagine everyone else standing up to read. Yeah. And they've got like, we've got Billy with Spot the Dog. We've got such a, we've got, I don't know, Ben with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. 
And Alfie's going to ring King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> I come on with an old wig. Oh! Yeah, I mean, it, was, it, was, it wasn't too far away from that, really. Should have done Lear, actually. That would have been good. So um, do you remember your, your first day on Pot- at Potter? Like, were, you, were you at the yeah. read You were, weren't you? Yeah, I was at yeah. the read <laughs> which also is comical in that, like, a line. <laughs> but it was nice to feel included. <laughs> but it's just only now has that really landed for me. I was like, what was I doing at the read-through? That is <laughs> bizarre. Um, but that was actually one of the nice things, I guess. It was that everyone was... I remember that being the... F- I think that was the first day, right? And everyone meeting, and it was sort of... It had that kind of meet and greet energy and everyone being, like, excited. Um, it had been a bit of... So I was just thinking who I'd met before then. I probably met... Probably just David Heyman and Chris Columbus doing the audition. And actually, I auditioned for Lee Jordan. Um, okay. But I remember thinking when they, when that came through, because I like knew the books and was really geeky about them. I was like, "That's not going to work." Lee Jordan's much older, you know. I was all like, "I was like, and this, this is silly." Um, but I read that, and they said we'd like you to play Dean Thomas. I was like, "Oh, cool." Um, so that was. So I think I had met. I mean, we all met presumably for the first time at the read through, right? Like none of us that's what I, met. Yeah, that's what before. I remember. Right, right. Um, I remember that day just being so. We were out in that building, sort of near the entrance. You remember? Yeah, it was, it was like, like they didn't want to let you the... all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> you just in case they had to get rid of you on the basis yeah, exactly. of the read through. <laughs> and it was such a weird building as well. It was almost like a because it had like a stage. It was almost like a town hall or like a little Did it have like. This... Can you remember? It did it have like a, a stage little, at the end. Yeah. I, I couldn't even tell you what it was actually used for because it was on an old aircraft field, for one thing. Yeah, so bizarre. <laughs> the old dances in the wall. The old dances used to be <laughs> there. But seriously, maybe it was that. Maybe was they like, did, yeah. Maybe they thought, yeah. It was, uh, well, I yeah. could imagine it would be. And it was, and we were down, we weren't on the stage where we, the tables were all set Yeah, it was in like, down. yeah, it was in the middle bit, yeah. Yeah, on the old dance hall. As it would God, yeah. the, the dance hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the actually the, that's actually where we that's actually where we did the dance lessons for the fourth movie, though. In there is as it? well, yeah. I did not remember that. My memory is horrendous. This is a big. This it's actually really <laughs> helpful talking about this with you guys because like, I didn't remember there was a stage. <laughs> People ask me questions about Potter, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes, like no, that, my memory is so right? bad. Genuinely, I'm like, I'm horrendous. I remember they do, like a they few do all things. blend into one, though, don't they, after a while? Yeah, I think, yes, they must do. And, and that one is sort of in a very murky, <laughs> distant past. From, yeah, I can't even really say that, honestly. Yeah, they blur into one very hard to remember one. Um, but I just have these like little flashes of things, you know, just like odd moments. But hearing something like that about the stage brings it back to me. I remember just something I've never... I've never remember. I remember something else for that day. Actually, we used to probably you guys were were <laughs> were too old for this, but I remember some of us just like running around, really like excitedly. I remember sort of... wanting to, and my dad reminded me I'm 14. <laughs> 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 followed by followed by something like, and they've just bought some ice some uh, some ice glazed donuts over there. Go and get. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. see if I remember noticed that. Five that. o'clock. Remember that five o'clock when the sandwiches would come out? Gosh, that was an important time of the day. That was uh, probably conditioned me. I still get that hunger at five o'clock every day. <laughs> Maybe it's because of pot and not because of, I uh, don't know, my, my general overeat. Um, <laughs> boy, oh boy, yeah, that first day. It's funny remembering that because that is one thing that I do. It's, it's misty, but I have, I come back to it. Just that, just the energy of that day. Just thinking like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. Set the tempo, do you think? Yeah, I think it did. I think it did. Also, the way that we were given a bit of freedom, you know, it didn't feel like didn't... I was, at least, I can only speak for myself really, but like made to feel really comfortable. And I think that's one of the things looking back on Potter that I'm most amazed by is that that, that we were given so much kind of space to be kids and sort of it, it, do you know, it didn't feel like we were getting sort of told off all the time. And, and you just think of what a stressful place a film set is and having <laughs> sort of like, no, you, you're, it's you mad, isn't now, it? Now, don't you think, you look back now and you think, 
like you say, how much um, creative, let's call it creativity, we're allowed to express offset and just yes. have, just like you say, still be kids. Uh, obviously, we're all very respectful that we're on a working site, essentially, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially when we're on location. So our first things were on the special in the first movie were location, weren't they? So yeah, we were away yeah. for like a month or two to start the film, which I think knitted us together even more. Mm. Mm. I think so. I think that was a really, I really missed the locations when they went. Cause I basically, I basically didn't have any more location stuff after the third or four. I think they probably just realized this is mad. We can't take a troop of kids like around the country every like five minutes to shoot in a cloister or like do Definitely, whatever. Yeah. Let's just build it. Um, but I remember, but you say we were all respectful and like, but I remember going away to Gothland, which is where we did that first bit of shooting. <laughs> And I just remember being on the plane and just being so like hyperactive and excitable. And like, I just had this memory that we were, and again, you know, Ollie was probably reading Kevin Keegan and you were probably, you know. <laughs> no, we weren't even on the, we didn't go on the plane. <laughs> Did you not? No, because we were coming from Birmingham. So it, well, instead of driving to London to then get the tr the plane up to home to, to Gotham, this village in the middle of the Yorkshire Moors, Mm. And I remember that I remember this day we were chatting to this this guy driving there, and there was Oliver, myself, and my dad, and it was literally like hammering it down with rain when we got into the moors. And this was before sat nav, really, or a very right. primitive role of sat nav, so the yeah two thousand. I remember we finally found this town, and the person opened or well, villages, and the person that opened our car door when we got there was michael stevenson right he's like a legendary assistant director in the film industry unbeknownst to us how big he was but then i remember we saw this guy drive off into the the, the distance into the rain and i, was, I always wonder whether he got back home in the end because he was so, <laughs> it was it was so wet <laughs> it was that bad like apocalyptic yeah, exactly was he not so, did he not anyway you're never going to remember that i was like was he not on unit driver? did he not stay did no he, he wasn't he was a uh, no, he wasn't a unit driver. Right, okay. Oh, that's interesting. God, that's so funny you remember. Because, again, realising now that that flight that you went on then was like the first, like us going to do the first bit of shooting. And it's funny, those kind of initial things actually probably have stayed with me more clearly. And we were just behaving horrendously. I mean, we were we were like behaving horrendously. We were just being hyper and we were, yeah. we played this game where we like, I don't know, they were like, you know, when they had those like fake credit cards that they used to have in magazines just to be like, you can apply for a credit card. We all like found those and then we started like trading them or I don't, I don't know what we were doing. But like, I just remember it was very excitable. And I just thought that must be so irritating for everyone else. I was like, yeah. film sets are stressful enough places. And then the bigger it is, the more stressful and intense the experience is for like the AD, for basically every department, right? There's so much going on. Imagine doing something on the scale of Potter and having to deal with like 350 kids. I mean, it's yeah. mental. You're just like, I'm trying to like schedule a day's shoot around like tutoring. I'm just like, what? Yeah, well, I, I look yeah. back at it and I'm just like, I would have been having an epi the whole time. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, I remember, I remember because a lot of us were in, I think we were in like the, it was, it was pretty much a B&B, &B, wasn't it? On where we stayed in Gothland. Yeah. And it was like, I remember it being like really not Hollywood. <laughs> but, 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 but not saying that that's a bad you thing you were disappointed just, you wish you'd stayed no, in well, no it wasn't I, I remember, it, I remember we, we were almost in like the loft room and it was really cool but I remember they had like a little dartboard downstairs in like a bar area and we were all just playing in that I remember doing yes. that when we when we finished filming um, as you say random things that you remember I remember they had like coke on draft but it was more like just syrup it's like everyone was just like bouncing off the wall like afterwards oh my it's gosh I remember what, that I, as well Ridiculous, exactly. but it's only through talking about it that that's suddenly yeah. coming to my head. You know, that's so fun. That like the dartboard and the coke on the coke on just things that are just completely. You know, I would that would never have come. And I'm just like, oh gosh, I can see it. And we used to play dart. Did they have a snoop? Did they have like a pool table as well? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Table? yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. remember everyone, God, everyone was trying to break into their pediums to get a, to get be able to pay for the uh, get the balls out. <laughs> <laughs> splurge it all on a all night pool contest yeah, yeah uh, but apart so, so apart from 
Apart from like flat, flat, flat Coke and stuff like that, <laughs> is, what, what would you say would be like any standout memories? Probably I'd say more later on then, when we were filming, <sighs> be it like actually on set or anything like that. Boy, I just this is how bad I am. If you if, if you guys would start talking about if we would start talking about stuff, I'd be more likely to remember stuff. Let me say something that just came into my head. I, I am just that bad. So one question, but, Alfie, I've hmm. always wondered. I know that when we were filming, you carried on into education, higher education, and then you went to university. And you didn't just go to any university. Where did you go to university, Alfie? Oh, come on. <laughs> this is just like... No, but it's impressive. That's why. It's impressive, mate. It's impressive. Uh, yeah, but it's... Uh, okay, yeah. I'll, 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 t- I'll tell you a story about it being impressive. Um, I, uh, I went to Oxford. Um, and I've tried my best not to do what I'm just going to tell you about in a second. <laughs> so I, I live with a mate of mine from Oxford. Um, and um, I feel now I'm saying the name like every five seconds. And I'm like, oh, I should have just said uni, should have just said uni. But we, we, were, we were finding someone, someone, his mate who he owns the flat with basically moved out. And we were finding someone to move in. And, um, <laughs> and we were chatting with <laughs> With our essentially now our new roommate, where we were just getting to know each other, and he was just like, Oh, just see if we get on, and all the rest of it. And she was asking, She was like, So, how did you guys meet? And we were like, Oh, we, we, uh, and he just started slightly stammering, and he was like, uh, um, uh, Mate, uni. And she was like, Oh, what uni did you go to? And he went, <clears throat> Oxford. <laughs> and she went, Oxford. <laughs> 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 and it was exactly that. I mean, they have a joke in the States um, about people who go to Yale saying they yeah. went to New Haven. And it is it's the same. <laughs> I mean, you can't really be like, I went to uni in Oxfordshire. I mean, I don't know. Well, you, you wouldn't really be able to. But it's just, it always gives me a little bit of a sense of like, uh, just, be, just I suppose because, because I think it carries such a reputation and yes, it's a fantastic university and I really enjoyed it and I was lucky to go and all of that. But I think the kind of the expectations that people have around it are unrealistic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's not unrealistic. It's that, it's, it's that the marketing is great. It, it's a great university, but it doesn't... It's got history, it's known, isn't it? Yeah, and it's got his. but that's what it is. It's like it's an yeah. institution that you already... Because you've heard of it and you know it's fancy, that doesn't necessarily tally with it's. It's not the best university for every course. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's not. Mm. It's just the along with Cambridge, the most prestigious, and everyone's heard of it. But I mean, it leads to things like I remember Afshan saying to me, <laughs> Afshan Zand, who played Padma. Did Afshan play Padma? I think she did. Um, <laughs> and she said to me once, and she would maintain this. She was like that I was the cleverest person she'd ever met. I was like, this is nonsense. She was like, you're going to Oxford. I was like, that doesn't mean this is silly. So that's kind of my reticence yeah, you, around the whole thing. So you, so, but what I was getting at is that you went there and then, but that was to study because you are fluent in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> and Spanish I love the way you well. did that. And I Spanish. The way you did that. I like, yeah, yeah. I wasn't saying you're really clever. I was saying you <laughs> conjure way in. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, just walking exactly doing King Lear. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the other people applied, you didn't apply, and you're standing outside the door one day just speaking a language. <laughs> On the phone to my mum, they were like, oh, <laughs> no. um, yeah, so that is that is my I was gonna say little cheat, massive cheat. Um, I did modern languages, um, which also you know, this is to like refute, which obviously I don't have to do to you guys, but because you know, but uh, Afshan's notion that I'm sort of super intelligent or anything. Modern languages had the highest acceptance rate of any course at Oxford when I applied. Okay, so it was 43%, which like, you know, people doing like history was like 10, English was like eight, you know, or whatever. Um, so if you're listening so- and you want to go to Oxford <laughs> and you're good at language, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make sure, just pick a language you speak already, apply for that, and you'll be fine. Um, yeah, that is, that's pretty much what I did. Because I, I, I speak Portuguese, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm half Brazilian. My mum's from Brazil. I speak Portuguese with my mum. And so I applied to do Portuguese and Spanish. And so lest anyone thinks that Spanish is a language that I sort of actually learned, Spanish is like as similar to Portuguese as you can pretty much get. 
Um, so I basically dosed it. That was that was that was really it. I think you're I record. think you're selling yourself short there, mate. But I was very. You just, I, feel, I, bad. I, you just feel bad that you outed me about speaking Portuguese. Studying no, I don't. I, I already spoke. No, I was. <laughs> A, I've always been impressed about how you could just adapt to any situation you're in, especially when we're filming, especially when there are girls around. They always seem to flock around you for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) Just dropping in a bit of Portuguese and Spanish. Oh, for a (laughs) two-two solid flesh of (laughs) Nelson. Doing Shakespeare in Portuguese. (laughs) But, uh, no, honestly, I'm... I was, what I was going to get at was how you went to like you, you were doing all that still while we we're filming, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was. So that was again. That was all right, really. I mean, I think it probably sounds more intense than it was um, because, uh, yeah, because filming. I, I guess by that point they had. You know, I remember on the first movie I had a lot of dates. And I think we shot a lot more stuff than we used. But I think, I suppose, as time went on, we got a, they got a better sense of what they would need. And, and, and you know, certain characters didn't come back. And, you know, they, they kind of mm. streamlined the thing. Um, so by, by sort of the end, when, like, academically, the stuff I was doing was a bit more demanding, I suppose. I was doing fewer days anyway. So it was a bit more manageable. Um, the other thing is that I would use, I would basically... The, oh, My school also being very academic and very kind of proud of that and insistent of that were really kind of hard headed with the, with, with, with Potter and were kind of like, um, said I couldn't miss more than X many days. So occasionally we, we would sort of have stuff. I don't know if you guys would remember this, but scenes would be shot and I wouldn't be in for like the beginning of the scene when they were like doing the wides or they'd like shoot Mm. a bit. And then I would sort of come in for a bit of it. So I was, I was, essentially doing less work than everyone else um and i always think there's a really funny moment which always like i'm not sure if this is actually what it was but makes me think of that in the uh fourth film obviously yep. when mad i made um, <laughs> put it in put it no, in we can shame. do it we can plug it we can nah, plug it. Nah, 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 <laughs> nah, it's all right i'll own to my mistakes i'll own to my mistakes um but i said there's a bit where um i think it was Emma says uh, he's an aura or something, or someone says he's oh, an yes, aura. Yes, yes, I remember. Yes, I remember. I go, <laughs> and my line is just aura, and then, and then the conversation continues. But it always makes me crease because the whole scene of that conversation is shot sort of at the point of the table where you can't see me, so you can't see me, and everyone's having this conversation, and then you just get the reverse, and I just go aura. Reverse is back. But we, I remember we kept we kept winding everyone up because we said, "Is it a raw?" <laughs> like we kept we kept making out different ways of saying it, just confused, just to have people panicking of what it, how it should be pronounced. <laughs> that is so deep, because especially, and this is to this day, it's something that I find so difficult. Which was <laughs> essentially, you think I would have got used to it after 10, 10 years, but you know, because the films are so big, there's so much. You know, Dean Thomas is like a part of it, but it's as I say, it's like I'd like a line a movie, basically. So it's something like that, aura. Well, I was like, that's like all I say in the scene. And you're just sitting there in the scene, just like, here it comes. Don't ruin, don't ruin it for everyone. <laughs> aura, uh, sorry, ever can we go again? <laughs> so after all the filming and everything else, I mean, well, one thing actually I remember while we're talking about the filming, I remember uh, Donald Gleason and myself went to watch Villa against West Ham away. And we'd all been filming. Um, Upton up, back at when, when it was Upton, Upton Park, Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. I remember we went because we we'd finished filming a little bit earlier, and both of us had prosthetics on, and we thought there's no time. We'll take it off on the way. So we got a car to take us to um, Baker Street, and then we jumped oh. on the underground to get across to make right. kickoff. <clears throat> I had my fake ear on, so George is missing ear. Don't all look yeah. like he'd been attacked by a werewolf, so he has scars all down his face. And we were, and I started to peel it off and thought, I oh, forget it. It's too much bath. I'll do it when I get back to the hotel. Got on the underground and no one would stand by us because we looked like thugs. <laughs> yeah, I, remember, I remember going into the, uh, the stadium and watching the game. And I remember seeing you and your pals about four or five rows further ahead. I'd forgotten this. We were there on the same day, that Upton Park. That I remember that Ashley Young 
came, yes. Ashley Young scored that amazing goal. He cut in from the left wing. Yeah. Like yeah, he used to do. Far corner, yeah. And just put it in the far corner and just my God, you, sound, my- you two sound like old people now. I remember <laughs> when. <laughs> we just, well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Playing for us. <laughs> Just saying, just saying when we were when we were doing well. Um, but anyway, anyway, apart from that, some of this is may, some of this is may know this or don't. But I was right. I'm trying, trying to use a segue here into stuff we got mm. coming. And um, so some some listeners may know or not. But we are all members of the Bunbury cricket team. So it's a charity cricket team made professional cricketers, sportsmen, actors, singers, basically any other vagabonds who want to join in. Um, but I remember when we were playing a game back in. So we played quite a few games throughout a couple of summers when we just finished filming um and i remember we were playing in 2014 and we were in the uh, in the locker room on one of the first earlier games and i remember the guys in the change room saying you know is alfie playing today and we were like no he's, uh, he's doing some showing him some new showing them in the states and that's all we knew but that turned out to be your, your role as wes gibbons in um right abc's massive how to get away with murder so how do, can you describe like how one getting into that that role because obviously as you say like going from say i I know you did stuff at like the edinburgh fringe and everything like that in between but going from dean thomas as you say which is like i think you're playing it down with just one line of film but going from (laughs) that to leading man um you know and everything on the front of it because i remember being in new york in the taxis and you came up telling people the highlights of what to do in new york and this is before i'd seen the show and i was like (laughs) What the hell's that? what's happening in this gap? <laughs> so what's the so what's the like what was it what was it like first of all being able to work on on that type of show um, and yeah leading to the role and everything like that? Yeah, that was it was it was mad as you say. I mean, nothing really could have prepared me for it. And uh, even though you know you kind of think you're prepared before something like that happens, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I could do that. That's not a big deal. But I just had this moment where I think it was the third day of shooting for the pilot. And we'd sort of started and it was all sort of going well. And, you know, it was just like a lot of stuff. And I was like, God, we're shooting quickly and there's a lot going on. And, you know, I hadn't really done much TV before then. I'd done like, uh, uh, I'd done a pilot, which um, I ended up not doing the series, uh, which I'd done like three days on. I did five days on a show called Mount Pleasant with David Bradley, um, yep, yep. which was really fun. Um, and five days on Sherlock. And that was it. So all of a sudden <laughs> doing this like massive network television show, which although admittedly at that point, we didn't know if it was going to get picked up or not. And so three days in, we were shooting this big group scene. Everyone left. And it was just this big scene with just me and Viola Davis. <laughs> and I just remember... <laughs> I just remember kind of pacing around running my lines and I just looked to the side and someone had just like set out our chairs and there was just the chair that said Viola Davis, the chair next to it that said Alfred York. And I thought, ah, don't fuck this up. <laughs> 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 I was just like, oh my days. Um, but I mean, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. I mean, it was, it was a lot of pressure that I put on myself um, kind of with everything, but specifically with the accent, because I'd never worked in an American accent before. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd like never even done one in like a student play or anything. I'd, I just like hadn't done it for like a couple of auditions and the auditions for that. So I was just like, I have to be on point. You know, I was like, it's not, I'm not doing it for English people. Or this is going to be on ABC and everyone else is American. And oh my gosh. And I could get recast. And blah, 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 blah. I was just that. And it, it was this massive world. So I would be, I was like doing the accent work before I went out there. I started, I remember on the, on the flight, we'd been given this book as reading by the showrunner, Pete Noel. He would send us like these books just to, to help us and give us a sense of the world. And I was sitting there reading it aloud. Usually uh, like if like traveling for work, I think they flew me like business class. And I was like, usually I'm like, oh, exciting. I'll like get all the food and the free champagne. I'm, ter- and I'm turning left on this plane. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That feeling of like, oh, and I'd like watch all the films. And stuff. I just sat there with the book reading out loud the American accent because I was just like that prangy out about getting it wrong um and I would like go to sleep with the radio on and I mean like the 
so it was a, it was a lot of work that I wanted to do to prep for it, and I wanted to do to feel like you know I could I could do a good job. And like my key thing with that. Sorry to interrupt. Did you stay in in the accent throughout your whole time from getting on the plane to set everything? Yeah. So that so that was the plan. I had decided that would help me because I didn't for two reasons. I didn't want the moment where I was like. <clears throat> How do I sound? You know, <laughs> I didn't like. I didn't want everyone to be like, "Oh, is he going to do it like that?" You know, I didn't want those looks or anything if it sounded bad. So I wanted kind of to be used to it myself and for everyone to be used to it, and not to have to have that awkward switch. The other thing was, I just wanted to spend more time in the voice, so I wasn't ideally thinking about the accent any at all, and I could just play the scene. Um, so, especially shooting things, you know, it's not like play where you do the scenes over a long period of time you get to know them and you you know you're you're kind of discovering the thing on the fly when you're shooting especially if you're shooting quickly um so i thought that would really help so that was kind of my my thing with the x but i remember i i'd done it in the plane and i was reading out loud and i was like talking to the air hostess is like massively like self-consciously and then I um I got to the hotel. I pulled up. Was this after you've been talking out, reading your book out loud? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. "Who's that English guy doing the bad American accent, talking to himself?" It was so, was oh, it like God. more champagne? I think you've had enough, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was off. That's it, how diligent I was trying to be. But I, was just quickly, was I was the person yeah, that I the we were like we pulled up in the car, and I saw the first person I saw was Matt McGorry. Um, who played a character called Asher and he had been on Origins of the New Black and I'd like Googled everyone so I knew and we had sort of obviously knew that we were both in it and he was just like oh hi and I just went hello hi <laughs> I just like dropped the accent like in the, I just was like I cannot this is too f***ing awkward sorry excuse me no. it's like this is too awkward um, but I ended up three days later I just like did the even more awkward thing of like suddenly switching and I just, just like, I'm going to do it. It's going to help me. This is going to be so awkward this morning, but I'm going to do it. And I walked down and I was like, hi, everyone. As you maybe can hear, I'm doing the accent. I'm going to do this now. And everyone was like, all right. I was just like, God, I look like such a... <laughs> <laughs> but I basically just kept it up. But it was all about just trying to be as prepared as I could. Yeah. yeah. And did you... So Sorry, did you get what you did you, well, I was going to say, did you, get, did you get coaching in the accent or was it a case of where you where you started with one accent and then go from it? So I, I always remember that there's always a thing where if you ever see a... Certainly a, like a, a high school style play at an English school, for some reason, all the accents are really New York. Like almost like, oh my god, you know, I'm like really over the top because 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 I suppose because you know we're never really taught to do generic general American. So was that yeah. always in your head to do that? Like, did you Google that beforehand, or did you get help before you you went into it? So, yeah, I think in terms of people doing really kind of over the top or like super distinctive accents to the like most intense degree, that's in a way it's it's sort of easier to hear the differences and it's easier to do that you like mimic the most intense thing when you're like starting mm. um and to do an accent sort of subtly or lightly um it, it, it is i think more challenging because you have to be really really specific because otherwise it just doesn't sound like you're sort of doing the accent maybe or it sounds a bit in and out so you have to be really precise with the vowel sounds um i was told they they asked me specifically to do something that wasn't like um if i'm remembering this right like very regionally like new york or like southern or like they wanted something that sounded a bit more and then so that would give them i think a bit of leeway about creating the backstory of the character and deciding where he was from and that kind of stuff which they ultimately did later and maybe to some degree fitted it with the accent but again it was an accent that it could have been from many places. Do you know what I mean? It, it didn't have like strong regionalisms in that way. Um, and I worked with the dialect coach in London, another dialect coach when shooting a pilot in Philadelphia and like a lot. And uh, I had another dialect coach who I worked with over the like, course of, this, of the time that I was on the show who was amazing in LA where we, where we shot the thing. And she was brilliant. And I would basically just sort of check in with her at the beginning and, and I would do that to the end of the thing. Mm. I've been doing it for like three and I would speak for seven months of the year in that accent I mean people didn't know how I sounded 
like in my sort of other life because to call it real life it feels weird because like for three yeah. years I spoke more like that than I did like this so it was it was it, there was a bit of a trip but um but even then I would be checking with my dialect coach just because there's always something that you've just never heard before, something that's just said differently you know or something that you you could say it in the accent but it's stressed differently it's like um like we say frustrating whereas the stress pattern in America is frustrating do you know what I mean? Like little things yeah. like that, you just yeah. wouldn't, you just might not know. You might not have picked that up yourself. So it's always, it's all like invaluable to have someone who can kind of guide you with that stuff. So I was always really kind of trying to be diligent with that stuff. So the show is produced by Shonda Rhimes, who is mm-hmm. a com- complete legend. Like she's done Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, uh, Bridgerton, the new Netflix hit. What was it like working on a project with her and what what is your what your character in it can you describe him mm. and the summarize the show in general oh boy okay um <laughs> and go. <laughs> and go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um so she i mean to work with someone of that level of skill and ability who'd created so many successful shows you know i mean i remember doing the pilot and i was like being sort of super green i was like oh we you know we don't know if it's going to pick to get picked up and we hope so and my friends just like turned, who was on the show just turned to me and she was like Viola Davis is playing the lead and it's produced by Shonda Rhimes we're getting picked up <laughs> <laughs> you know she was like that's obviously going to happen and you know she was completely right but I you know so many things get made and don't go to series and and, and you know when you're sort of in the stable of, uh, of, of, of of a producer who's sort of has that known track record, knows what works and can, you know, guide it. So it, it kind of reached the level of success that it did. It's, it's, you, you're in much better hands. So that was an amazing thing and part of why it was such a kind of exciting opportunity, you know, even though unbeknownst, I didn't realise, you know, quite what that meant at first just because I was so green. But as my friend said, we're getting picked up and so we did um so that was that was incredible um she wasn't actually the showrunner on our show she didn't she didn't write and create it that was pete Nowalk, who had worked with shonda on um on gray's anatomy i think no on a show called private practice maybe he had written on anyway he'd he'd worked with shonda before and so it was sort of he was sort of part of the family um even though it was his show um and his idea and the basic idea of the thing was that you you meet these young law students who are just starting law school um and they're bright-eyed bushy-tailed you know looking forward to their future and um the other thing so you see that in kind of one section of the story and the other section you get these flash forwards to a night where they're disposing of a body and so mm-hmm. just the simple like structural um, question the, the obvious structural question that's asked is what how did these people get there and so the whole first season kind of leads you up to the discovery of and you discover at the end of the first episode who the body is and then you then you kind of see how do they get to the point where they're disposing of this body who killed it and then it kind of leads on to there with like you know what do you do next because you know once you make a mess and try to sweep it under the carpet it's only it only tends to sort of get bigger and bigger and so that's the kind of, and, and I should say, this is all kind of presided over by Viola Davis's character, who is this sort of, I don't know if it's too early to say something like that, but feels like a really kind of iconic character. This, this yeah, well, um, she's, Because she's kind of like, she's, in terms of like the character on that, I think it's great because she's obviously a teacher, but she's using the kids for their own her own end. Like, obviously, oh, yeah. that's, that's kind of how it goes. But I think the cool thing I, I loved about it is how obviously you need differences in characters, but how the characters are so different, mm. you know, that's the, the draw to it. Really. You've got all these different elements, which you could see happening at a, at a top law university where that would happen, but also how they play themselves about it. But then you've got like a cliffhanger at the end of one of the episodes and you're like, Hey, Hey. And then luckily it's Get a Netflix, cliffhanger like every here, five so minutes. It, yeah, exactly. Oh, it, would just, <laughs> it would just like roll around. But so when, when that came out, did you, did you um, notice the difference in terms of like people coming up to you in the streets and saying, wow, that's amazing. I've seen you in a taxi in New York. 
<laughs> you know, or, in, or just I love the show because I remember we were, I was going through photographs of um, a Bunbury game and my pal uh, was like, hang on, he's, he's, he's British. Yeah, yeah. And again, I suppose that, that's the thing that goes, goes back to the accent, just speaking about it all the time, mm. is that I think she must have seen some behind the scenes stuff, but you were still in the accent then. So that, so, so if it was behind the scenes stuff, it might have been, but if I ever did an interview or press, I would always speak. I was, I was always kind of careful not to be, I would be happy to tell people that I was doing that um, or to meet people one-on-one. -on -one. I would like talk in the accent, but if I ever did any press, I would do it in British because mm. because I didn't want to look like I was trying to pass myself off as something as I wasn't. Do you know what I mean? Walk, Even though I was walking in a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I told you when you start with accents, you do the most extreme things. I yeah. stopped doing yeah. that after a couple of months. <laughs> the hat and the boots went. Yeah. Walk, <laughs> I, I walking around Philly time, saying mate. howdy may not be the best thing to do. <laughs> but um, but it, but I mean that thing about people. So, so yeah, so for the most part, I was talking in kind of my accent as I would, as I would do press, but it, it would be strange because I wouldn't have spoken like that at all for like three months. And then we'd start doing press for like the launch of the season. And I, I would sound weird. I would like sound weird to myself. It would feel weird to do it. But ultimately I thought it doesn't really matter to me if I sound weird in my own life. The more important thing is that it sounds right the show um but but it, it does lead to people occasionally oh i was doing a play up in manchester <laughs> and some and and uh and two girls they must have been about 16 or something came up to me and they were like oh my god da, da, what are you doing in manchester i was like oh, i'm doing a play and they were like do you like england and i was like <laughs> what do you mean i was like is this your first time and i was like i was born in london they were like, I was like, I'm talking to you now. I was like, I'm not doing the accent now. What do you mean? They were like, oh, cool. Enjoy your stay. I was like, no, I said I'm, oh, never mind. It was like, <laughs> they went away. he's very method, isn't he? He's very <laughs> method. It was so bizarre because that's because I think people associate you with what they know. And if someone has watched all of How to Get Away with Murder, you know, watched however many hours of TV and like their only contact with me is that you know you you kind of hear what you expect to hear to a certain degree and so that's i think that's what happened and me talking for like four sentences with the, wasn't enough to kind of rejig that they just thought oh weird he sounds kind of british today that's strange anyway you know bizarre though. so weird <laughs> i feel like i'm not answering any of you guys's questions i'm like just like veer it's, off <laughs> I'm it's, it's good. we've got well, the thing is, we've got questions written down, but I've, I'm yet to go to them. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I sort of just when you talk about that, about when uh, people speak to you of, um, you know, fans interaction, all that kind of stuff. Mm. I just had a flashback to I remember I was in an audition room years ago and you walked in. Do you remember? When was this? Oh, this is like, oh, God. what? What are you going for the years? same part? Well, we go for the same part. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. I have no idea, but we were both like, there's just, I was literally, I was the, I was, I was the only one in the, the room and then you walked in and I completely forgot what, by the, by the time I walked into the audition, I completely forgot what the hell I was there for. <laughs> <laughs> and the casting lady was saying, oh, so, oh, so how do you know Alfie? I was like, oh, we we're in Potter together and got talking about that. I think I did, I do three goes. And then you and I went for a drink and I was, afterwards I was thinking, Hmm, probably didn't go to I think I got a call back but I don't think it was I don't think I gave the best show of myself <laughs> <laughs> oh no I'm sorry I've like scuppered your audition yeah, God, yeah exactly. sort of like, what was it oh, God, was I, I could, auditioning for it as well or was I just rehearsing there I have a sort of vague I again I do not know I assume, I assume that you were auditioning because it was at a uh, casting office Right, okay, I must have been. But, but presumably not for the same thing. <gasps> I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Well, not um, for the same part, probably. I don't know. God knows. Who knows? Um, who knows? Um, anyway, back to our podcast. Yeah, what? sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> the catch-up's nice, but let's answer the questions. <laughs> so this is called normal, not normal. What mm. does normal, the word, mean to you? Normal means... Uh, comfortable familiar and boring 
but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. <laughs> I think I have a bit of a prejudice against the word normal. I'm like, normal, it's normal. Who wants to be normal? You want things to be interesting or different or exciting. But probably I think I'm coming to accept more and more that I like normal. I like doing quite like comfortable, chill things. And, mm. Yeah. But I do feel like it's, there's a part of me that like wants to be doing things that are exciting, different. And it feels like that's kind of, kind of counter energy to normal. But um, yes. what, what, so yeah. what, what would you say then would be the most normal thing about you? Mm, the most the normal. Mustache right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's very low key. Very low key. Um, <laughs> the most normal thing about God, it's like, where do you even start? Um, I like, oh, this is a good one. I like walking. That is normal. And, and again, I mean, more. it's almost not normal because it's so boring. It's sort of beyond normal and to just really dull. Um, when, you say, like, when, went, when you say walking, mm-hmm. do you mean like rambling? Or just like going for walks. Yeah, love that. Like I like I went with my girlfriend for a walk when the lockdown lifted last year. Like up the Thames, we walked to Oxford, and I just parts of me when I was just having the. T- I know, yeah. It's like forty miles or something like that. Oh, more than that. It's if you go direct, it's like fifty. To, I think we did almost a hundred because we followed the river we like properly. Oh, like, oh right. Okay, I had yes. I had to imagine of you walking with like a wicker picnic basket, going, "Come on, let's go. I'll take you out for a lunch." <laughs> Where are we going? Oxford. Oh, okay. We'll go. We'll go and do some punting when we get there. Oh, marvelous, marvelous. Yeah. Kind of. We did go punting when we got there, but it's really fun. It's punting is fun. That is just a fact. Um, but yeah, it was a bit. I mean, no. But my girlfriend is very tolerant of, and actually, she enjoys it too. But like, I, I, I'm like, let's go on this walk. She's like, okay. <laughs> I think she's more like. She likes going for runs and she's more active than me. And I'm just like, oh, it's a bit hard work. Walking is just nice. But I, but part of me is in conflict with, with like my younger self that was articulated actually the other day. I went for a walk um, again uh, along the canal, along Regent's Canal in London. Um, and I just came across this bit, just coming up to King's Cross, to sort of cross over because there's a tunnel. Anyway, you go over like Angel. People don't need to know that. Um, but there's this other bit where you're back by the canal and there was this little girl just went, oh, no. she was sort of throwing a bit of a strop and she just kind of turned around to like the adult she was with and just went, this is boring. We're just walking. We're just, it's just boring. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I just thought, I used to think that, and now that's how boring I've become. <laughs> I was having the time of my life. So that is know, the probably pe- the most the best normal ho- thing about me. The best holidays I have are walking holidays, I think. So I completely they're agree. great. They're Isn't amazing. it good? It's just time and space. I did, I did a pilgrimage like three years ago. I did the, um, the Camino de Santiago. Which oh, is, is that the one in the northern Spain? Exactly, yeah. That looks it's, incredible. That looks absolutely amazing. incredible. 30 yeah. days, you start, I started in the Pyrenees, I ended up in the sea. You walk from the mountain to the sea, doing like... So where, know, where'd you go beautiful. through that, like Bilbao, Santander, or are you further north? Yeah. Sorry, um, the south no, there are, there are various routes, so you can go from the south of Spain, you can go from Seville, and there's one mm. called La Villa de la Plata, which is like that one, and there's the Camino del Norte, which is the one that goes along the coast, and then yeah. there's um, then there's the Camino Frances, it's called, which again is the one that, that you cross the Pyrenees at the beginning. I mean, traditionally a pilgrimage, you start at your house, right? I mean, you just leave. It's just you're just trying to get there. But um, but I started just in France, across the border the first day. I went through Burgos, Pamplona. Sorry, I'm doing that like annoying thing where people like it's like, like can I have a glass of Rioja, please? I have the uh, Campo Viejo. <laughs> It's the worst. I get rids for that by people, and rightly, and rightly. Um, so yes, and and you finish in Santiago, but um, I've done it again. <laughs> I said it's just the worst. It's just the worst. Um, yes, I think there was a Pamplona Burgos. Anyway, I'm going to stop because I'm learning yes, Spanish. Yes, but saying that, saying, saying that you're doing that though, Alf, I've noticed though that so I think you should try and at least pronounce a city or a town how the locals pronounce it. Hmm. 
I think that's Go at on, least then. one thing to do. Well, so like when we were in, when we were down in South, we went to Valencia. Um, <laughs> I, remember, I remember that's how they said it. They didn't say va va. They said it with a b at the beginning with a regional accent. But <laughs> but if People you're going to speak know Spanish, where you mean, if you said Valencia, <laughs> yes, I know. Know. Oh, no, 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 they're not going to. No, 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 no. You say that. You say that. But anyway, anyway, right. So you try, but, you, but then you try and say a word, all right, and mm. you'll get corrected on it. What by if you're saying it correctly? No, no, no. So, okay, so oh, say, right. say instead of saying that, you're saying I went to Valencia. Someone's like, it's Valencia. Valencia, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, but I mean, like, I mean, instead of saying, instead of saying, um, instead of saying like gracias, you'd say, as an English person speaking in, in uh, speaking Spanish, you'd say gracias. Hmm. Right. The amount of people to go, no, 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 it's not like that. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm trying it. I am trying it. <laughs> I think it's like. <laughs> Not that this has haunted there. him at all, but it's got, No, it yeah, is, it is. Say, but like, like every really well. can, it's amazing the amount of place what do it. I remember when we did a drive around Europe and we were in Italy and uh, Rupe was with us and we were in this tiny little town and we were trying to speak in very, very broken Italian. Just to be respectful, really, you know, oh, could we, you know, sit down here? And, you know, we're trying our best with it. Yeah, but he and said then, it is. And it, can we speak? Can we sit? Uh, <laughs> can we sit? <laughs> and you wonder and this, why they uh, got cross. And the, and the girl starts speaking English to us. We're like, no, 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 no. We're trying, we're trying. We're trying. This is a really difficult thing, isn't it? I think it, I think it is important to, 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 like, try to show willing. I think it's sort of respectful. Do you know what I mean? To mm-hmm. some degree. I hate going to countries and not being able to speak the language also because... I'm lucky and I tend to go to places where I speak a little bit of the language. Well, I, spe- I, spe- I mean, especially as you learn the languages and studying at Oxford, you know, you should do. <laughs> <laughs> I, do always, I do always want to say that if, when people say, if you could speak to your 10 year old self, what would you say? I would definitely say pay more attention in French or Spanish or some kind of like learn a lang- learn a second language because it may not seem that important to you at that age, but when you're 10 years time, you can get so much further and have such better experiences speaking because I think when you can have a, a conversation with someone in another language, <laughs> I'm yet to do so, but I imagine <laughs> it is such a, a rewarding thing, especially when you're in their country trying to learn stuff. Like, just asking where things are like it can go a, a long long way it's amazing it's amazing you get to know a place in a, in a in a different way i think one of the difficulties that like ollie obviously has come up against is that it's, it's, they don't like it's you. Too, it's, they don't like <laughs> yeah, you exactly yeah <laughs> that english people tend to be really bad at it english speaking people have the luxury of going anywhere and basically people excuse the pun we speak the lingua franca of the world right so people speak English much better than we speak any other language in general mm. and so firstly it's more convenient and easier for them just to talk to you they don't, it's like cool this is great but I'm you know your waitress I'll get your coffee if you want but I'm not going to give you an Italian yeah. language class um, well, that's it. I mean it's like it's like there's a there's a thing like you know when you go to a uh, a, a restaurant and you're like well I remember actually in a hotel, like we were in Germany and we went to the Oktoberfest and uh, my pal and I sat down and again like they the lady spoke to us in German when we got there, we must we must look a bit Bavarian or something. We're in the later housings and everything. Uh, so we're like, yeah, yeah. So we, sat, we sat down, <laughs> and then she came over and goes, uh, uh, starts speaking, and we just like look at it and just pick up pick up the menu. We were like, far too proud to ask for the English menu. We we're like, um, uh, dry bear. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. came back with three bears. Perfect. She came, yeah, she came. She came back. She came back right with three Steiners. She was trying to choose, like we were trying to point out which one of this thing we wanted. So my pal just chose one. Turned out to be, yeah. So it's like a massive Steiner. We had three of them each because originally we just wanted two because so we'd have so we didn't have to go back up to the bar. So we had three each, and these things had the volume of like a bottle of wine. And we were like, still too proud. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. I could, I could easily say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danke. Yeah. Prost. And off we went. That's that is good. It, yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> exactly. So there is a, there is a proud. I think there's a. But then then you go on the other side of it though. And then if you travel, I found if I go away with friends who don't travel too much, mm. they are the Brits abroad. And don't Hello. even try and speak slowly in English. Could I English. have a table? Table. 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 It's like cross people can't understand <laughs> you. Like, yeah. 
A friend of mine, I'm going to put him on blast here. <laughs> it's actually quite deep. My friend, actually, who I, who I, who I live with. Um, and he said, the other, he said the other day, he's, he's been with me to Brazil. Um, and, and I think he's been on, he's, he's been on his own as well. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so he fancies himself as knowing a bit about Brazil. He, not really, but he, we'd make a joke of it amongst ourselves. But he was kind of negotiating or doing some work. I don't know whatever it is he does, with, with some Brazilian partners. And at the end of the call, he just went, Obrigado, guys. <laughs> Which I just think is just so bad. It's almost better not to, I mean, it is better to try, but that is, when he said, I said, he didn't really say that. Said, yeah, I did. I was like, wow. I think, next, wow. Time, I think next, next time just add a chaps to the end of it as well. That'd be just to top it up. <laughs> Just a really, <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, it's a shocker, but, but you've got to start somewhere. But I think it, it is, it's that double-edged sword that people want to practice their English, I think. One, yeah. and people, and frankly, people's English is going to be often better than your, whatever you're trying to learn to speak when you're abroad. And the other thing is, we just don't, we're spoiled in that way. We have that option, so we don't have to learn. If you have to, you do. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. It, is that, it is that sink or swim, isn't it? Completely. And I think with languages, it's, 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 it's really difficult in that way to kind of to, to create that need. I mean, for me, with my Spanish, the most I learned Spanish was when I was in Spain. I lived there yeah. for like five months. And I, and I said to myself, I'm, not, I'm pretty much not going to speak English. I, m- my friends probably spoke English, but not, not as much as I spoke Spanish. And I just, I was speaking Spanish all, all the time. And it's just like, it's, you know, it's completely it's completely different. So you have to kind of find that discipline and that opportunity and where do you get that? But I mean, the flip side of it is you get to see a place in a completely different way. You know, it's worth that effort because you have a completely different relationship with it. So, <laughs> so Brigado, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> since, um, <laughs> since half of that's going to have to be edited. Yes. The next, <laughs> the next question. This is so, the worst. I'm the come worst. on, Jays. Rapido, 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 rapido. rapido. <laughs> So since all of us asked, what's the most normal? What is the least normal thing about you? I'm just remembering what we were actually talking about before. I <laughs> chatted on. I'm the worst. I'm so sorry, Alice. This yeah. is going to be a nightmare to edit. Um, what is the least? En, uh, en, espa- en, en español, por favor. En español, vale. Bueno, sí. la cosa que yo diría que es so, the so least, ¿Eh? least normal thing. <laughs> ¿Qué? That's one of the most useful words in Spanish that you can have. That's, yeah? that's, that's about the extent of my Spanish right now. See? <laughs> it's like really <laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> that's a good communicative trick. I was like, when there's any kind of difficulty, hit it with enthusiasm. You know yeah. yeah. Um, so the least, the least normal thing about me, how uh, much of an old person I am at heart. I think I'm really, um, and I've thought about this. I think it's, I think it's my dad's fault. My dad's, my dad's 96 now. <laughs> and so I think generationally, I'm actually of a different generation than I appear, which is unhelpful being only 32, quite young, and looking like I'm about 12. Um, so I, I think- you Benjamin yeah. Button. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's actually quite, that's actually, felt great affinity with that character. <laughs> um, because I, genuinely, I grew up in a house where my dad referred to the radio as the wireless, you know. I mean, that's like watching like war movies from the 60s. Like I remember we slightly had this on Potter when like I always felt like so like dumb about popular culture. I felt like there was so much that everyone would talk about. I'd be like, I don't actually know what that is or I've never actually seen that film. Or I'd like, I'd like never seen Back to the Future. Or I remember like, I think maybe you guys and Matt were like, what, How have you not seen that? Or like, whatever it was. And I, and there were so many things like that, that I would sort of always have growing up. And I think that still, that still like lingers in, <laughs> I'm coming into myself with my, with my walking, growing into my old age. Um, <laughs> but I mean, beyond that, it's like technology. Like I'm technologically useless. I mean, for someone who is, I think 32, I'm maybe a millennial. I don't know, but I'm, I'm, that describes me in, in no accurate way. I like, I, I hate technology deep, sort of deep down inside. I like if I could, uh, so at uni, I hand wrote all of my essays. 
like that was like meant to no one no one did that i like hand wrote them and like crossed stuff out and like just people were like why don't you just use a computer i was like can't type don't want to learn i'm okay i was like i'm living my best analog life and i remember when actually was, oh, you guys got iphones quite early on didn't you like straight away we had, Is we had this true? we had yeah we had uh, we had like first or second generation ipods yeah on the yeah, I, I don't even know the difference second film i think it was <laughs> maybe the second film yeah it was when i remember you used to get it and it came with a charger a stand um like a hard case stand, it came basically with everything it stand. doesn't now yeah it all came all came in yeah that's so uh, but i remember this stuff and i remember being like oh and like and maybe it was that one that had this vague memory of you guys talking about when the iphone was going to come out maybe and i just remember being like hmm probably won't get one <laughs> it's not for me and i tried to like resist getting a smartphone for like the longest time i was like still playing snake 2 yeah for, like in like 2012 or something um i need so 20p for the red box 20p for the red <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i can't like i don't know the functions on phones as well i'm the worst for that i barely know how to i i like when i like go to the theater or something I will switch the phone off, then on again, then off, then because I'm like maybe the alarm. I'd like check the alarm's yeah. not on, but I know mm, the alarm's mm. not going to go off when it's switched off. But I check it. I, I just, I just live in fear. So that is, <laughs> that is probably it's probably not normal for a 32 year old adult um, not to be able to do basic technology. But that is that's me. Brilliant. So what what would you say, uh, Alf, is coming up next? Like, what are you excited for uh, coming up in the future? Obviously, you've got your foundation on uh, on Apple yes. TV. Um, and what are you currently filming? Is it picture? I was going to say I'm looking, looking forward to to Jack coming back from injury. That's what I'm. That's, oh, that, that's, well, that of course, yeah. That's what I'm most uh, looking forward to. Yeah. Um, I was anyway, wondering, I Alfie and Oliver both support the 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 bad team in Birmingham. <laughs> the bad, bad team. At least they're not in the relegation zone to, to the Division One. <laughs> the bad team. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say that's not very yeah. accurate. Accurate description of where we're going this these these days. Um, no, what um, in terms of work? Yes, foundation. So foundation will be coming sometime this year. I mean, like so many things with foundation, they had the most like rigorous testing. I mean, they had their own like COVID unit. I mean, it was it was incredible. I, I basically haven't felt so safe during the whole pandemic <laughs> there. I mean, I was tested before I went. Um, we were doing some shooting in Ireland. I was picked up in a car one of the unit drivers drove from like across island took a ferry came to like chichester where i'd been doing a play stayed the night picked us up took us back the next day it was like 12 hours because that was more secure wow. than getting the plane um we were tested beforehand um we they had their own units everyone was tested every two days we had to quarantine all the same i mean it was like it was very 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 rigorous um and sort of amazing that they managed to kind of do it and kind of still shoot through that um through through those, all those challenges but i mean obviously foundation i think would have been along sooner if it if, if it wasn't for everything because even though they managed to do that you know there, there was points at which that wasn't viable or possible or allowed um but so it's it, it's it's probably i think people who know the books and, and like asimov's writing might feel it's been a long time coming um and even more so now because of this but um but i'm really genuinely the scripts are fantastic to look forward to really so yes so foundation for sure the socially distant thing was <laughs> was was different was um something called a uh, picture of dorian gray yes which oh, is yeah yeah, yeah. which is a sort of it's been called an online play or well, the last one was called a play for the online stage um which is actually a really good description i mean i've talked to friends who are like it's just an online play then it's just a film <laughs> i was like but it, but it sort of <laughs> i was like if it's on a screen i was like no but it sort of isn't and and it, and it really doesn't feel that way it feels theatrical um so there was one i did last year called what a carve up which was an adaptation of a of a novel by the same name um uh, but the adaptation was very, very clever. It was written by Henry Philo Bennett, and he basically takes the end of the novel as the starting point and tells the story of it 
through the perspective of the son of the lead character, who's kind of trying to piece together what happened as a kind of homemade true crime documentary thing. Mm. So mm. it had a really kind of clever conceit. And that was that was brilliant and a lot of fun to do. And actually I wore this exact t-shirt. And people are gonna think I don't have <laughs> I don't have any other clothes. You stole, you stole the wardrobe. I stole the I stole the wardrobe. Everybody actually, does that, don't they? Everyone does that. That's the best bit of the job, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Come on, that's like I don't buy clothes anymore. I just hope for more employment. <laughs> um actually I did steal this, but not from that. So this from a photo shoot. <laughs> for a play that I was doing last summer. So um, I say stole. I'm pretty sure I asked the designer. Sorry if I, I didn't. Um, so that was great. So anyway, Picture of Dorian Gray is the next one of those. Um, the next one of those. It's not. It's, it, it's a similar thing with the same wonderful director, Tamara Harvey, who is brilliant. So much fun to work with. Um, and again, Henry Fulu Bennett made the adaptation. So that's the team from What a Carve Up. And it's an adaptation of the Picture of Dorian Gray. And I, that's, that's, I could say that's why I had this moustache. The truth is I did this for my own um, it, looks, it looks good, mate. Pleasure. It does look good. Yeah? It looks all right? I do, I mean, I do feel absurd, like, I do sure. feel like you need like a hot, a top hat though. <laughs> I was genuinely, I was, I was half a beat from a top hat on Dorian Gray. Some of the costumes I, I got to wear were outrageous. I basically sat back being horrific and, and kind of entitled. And I was like speaking like this the whole time. It was great. Yeah, 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 great. yeah. So much fun. <laughs> Takes me back to the old days. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, so that was a real hoot. So I got to do that for two days with a fantastic cast as well. Like Steve, Stephen Fry um, is uh, the interviewer. And it, it, this one has a slightly different uh, kind of dynamic. So it's set up as a kind of more official documentary. And so there's an interviewer and there are two characters that are interviewed and there's lots of found footage. Um, but it's like essentially me and Joanna Lumley getting interviewed and, and it sort of tells the story through that and bits of, bits of sort of found footage. Yeah, I think it's and where be will really that be out? Um, that will be on the internet. Oh yeah, I forgot you're not taking the interwebs. Yeah. <laughs> on, that... <laughs> on the interwebs, put your, put your dial up in. Yes, don't, exactly. Connect don't to try the and modem. phone me because if you won't be able to hear, it'll be engaged. <laughs> do 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 do. Um, right. So now I'm going to ask you my 3 a.m. questions, which I'm I actually so sent sorry, you. Guys. <laughs> yes, I was going to say good. I'm prepped. I'll be more concise. Okay, great. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll try. Um, first of all, Alfie, what is your favourite book? My favourite book at the moment, I have to say at the moment. Uh, can I have three? You're going to say no, sure. but I'm going to just give you three anyway. Oh, cool. Um, are the Wolf Hall series by Hilary Mantel. Wolf Hall, Bring Up the Bodies and uh, The Mirror and the Light, which I read last year. And they were like probably the highlight of my year which again makes me sound normal and boring but that was genuinely just like as as much of a thrill as you can get you know and now, without I've now going got, anywhere I've got, I've got images of you walking to oxford with a wicker basket <laughs> reading out loud in an american accent <laughs> <laughs> reading reading about thomas cromwell in an american accent boy oh boy it's um that's like a horrible collage of, of things other people don't need to have in their minds. Um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say those three books were, I mean, genuinely, I felt like I was like, had lived with Thomas Cromwell. I mean, people have loved those books, but I'm just like, I'm, I said this to a friend the other day, I miss him. I genuinely miss Thomas Cromwell. I think that those books are written from such a personal perspective. You feel like you get to know someone so intimately. Um, that genuinely, I uh, I feel that I miss it. And, and one of the, uh, it was actually maybe end of last year, I went for a little walk. I was walking around the city near here. And I, I stumbled across Austin Friars, which is where Thomas Cromwell had his house, which I knew from the book. And I was genuinely so excited. I was like, <laughs> this is it. This is it. And that was all the work of Hilary Mantel's amazing writing. Yeah, incredible books. Massively recommended to anyone. Who has, you know, 500 hours to spare because <laughs> they are tomes, uh, but they're beautiful. What is your favorite song? Favorite song? I'm going to say 
the best of my love by the emotions. You know that one? Yeah. Smooth, How about it, eh? Very good, very good. What's your favourite food? Black truffle. That's such a... <laughs> this is bad, isn't it? This is bad. You mean, is this one picked up by a pig or just like any old truffle? <laughs> no, black truffle actually is the, is the least fancy of the two truffles. There's white truffle. Um, I was worried that with all the talk about West Windsor and Oxford, if I'd said white truffle, I might, I might, <laughs> oysters, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might not come across in the right way. So I went for the black truffle, which is a bit more relatable. Um, yeah. No, I just love it. That is, I'm sorry, that is the like the tasty. I can have that truffle risotto, truffle. Obviously, those things are predictably expensive, but um, but my days, anytime I'm like anywhere and they have anything truffly on the menu, I'm like yes, yes, mm. yes. Love that stuff. What is your favourite film? <laughs> <laughs> Terrified of my answer and how long I can drag out. Um, <laughs> um, my favourite film. My fa- oh yeah, I'm going to say um, something again. Recent, fresh in my mind. I saw a film last year called Corpus Christi, um, oh. which is a Polish film. <laughs> It's absurdly beautiful, powerful, good, extraordinary. I mean, just everyone should find it and watch it. It's, well, yeah, it's, it is probably at the minute my favourite film. I mean, I have a kind of long list of like eight favourite films, but I'm not going to bore you with that. But like, <laughs> but, but also they're, they're films that everyone else says, probably everyone says this now, but this, because it's relatively new, it's just so worth finding and watching. It's... And extraordinary. It's a masterpiece. Corpus Christi. I'm so yeah. glad, Alfie, that describing those, like all those words you used to describe it there, I think are really good descriptive words for films. But one of my pet peeves is mm. when you see an advert when a film comes out and they always, so many films use it, like an advertisement, a triumph. I want a triumph. What are you on about? I want triumphantly what? That's, that's one word. I can't stand when people are trying to describe a word. A triumph. If you don't notice it though, right? How many times you'll see a film get advertised with a triumph? They don't say best film you'll see this year or anything like that. A triumph, a triumph. is very yeah. Awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like that Ashley Young goal we saw at, uh, at Upton Park yeah, all that, those years ago. That, that was, was a triumph. Well, he triumphed triumph. to beat the keeper, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> a triumphantly and- successful film. That's much better. And what is your favourite quote? My favourite quote. Um, what a triumph. What a triumph. <laughs> a triumph. A triumph. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to, um, again, just plough my furrow a bit deeper and say something in Spanish. Um, ¿Quién lo duda? Which means, who would doubt it? Um, it's a line from... Early on in Don Quixote, because I'm, <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to do it. I've already, I've done it. No, 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 so no you should do, you should do, you should do. Okay. There's yeah. a massive fountain of him in, in Madrid, isn't there as well? <laughs> God, like a local, you're taking me back. He's <laughs> been run over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, it's very. It's I'm impressed. I for one am impressed. Um, yeah, so it's 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 quien lo duda. He says um, this is something that Don Quixote says to to Sancho. Um, I'm mixing and matching. I'm all over the place at this stage. Right at the beginning, Don Quixote is saying to Sancho, "Come out with me. You can be my. Uh, you can be my." Um, I, this is even worse. I can't remember the word. And it's squire. You can be my squire. Um, and I'm a great knight and we're going to ride off and have adventures. And Sancho's a bit like, mm, not sure about this. And I've got the wife at home. And he's a bit like, mm. and he goes, no, 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 you should come. The things that could happen. He was like, like what? He was, well, 
it's very normal that uh, knight errants such as myself should go and through their exploits and their deeds become kings. Uh, they get thanked by some faraway king whose kingdom they saved from a dragon and, uh, you know, they marry the beautiful princess and they become the king. And then to reward their, uh, to reward their uh, squire, they make their squire uh, a duke or, 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 you know, but the worst, a governor. And, he, and Sancho sort of goes, oh, I think I could be a governor. And he goes, ¿Quién lo duda? Who would doubt it? So that is the long-winded explanation of my favourite quote. Because it's sort of like, why not believe it? Choose to believe something extraordinary. I think mm, it's very beautiful. good. What, what a great quote. Very good. Thank you very much for that, Alfie. What was the quote again, Alfie? I forgot the quote. ¿Quién lo duda? ¿Quién lo duda? Who doubts it? Who, Who would doubt it? it? Very good. Very Why good. not? Doubt basically. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Well, Alfie, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I've really, really had a great time, as <laughs> I'm sure everyone else has once we've edited this down <laughs> from the four hours that we're at. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no, it's all good. So, you know, I was actually, before we, before we came on today, I was just so happened to, this is how nerdy I am. I have, I've got two laptops which died many years ago and they've just been sat at the bottom of a drawer. So mm. over lockdown, I've been YouTubing how to get the old me the memory out of these dead computers so I can see right. what's on them. And I found a load of photos of when we were, it was like you, Afshan, Bonnie, Matt, myself, Oliver, and we all went, we went for a meal in London. There's, I've no, I can't ever remember seeing these photos before, but there's a video of you walking down the road pretending you're rock your Apollo Creed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually remember this. Because you had like this leather jacket on or something, but you look like Apollo Creed looking for Balboa. <laughs> uh, good times. But mate, thank you so much for joining us this week. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys. It's been an absolute joy. Apollo. That was brilliant, that. Still chuckling. It was one of the, yeah, apologies if it, we kind of go down a lot of random holes with that because we are just chatting to a mate and that is exactly, I guess, what happens when you're talking to a friend. But a very, very good laugh, as always, with Alfie. As you can probably tell, no one's got a bad word to say about him because he's such a, just a fun guy to be around. Exactly. So he didn't actually say it, but I remember when he was actually in Spain studying. I think it was in, I, remember, I think it was in Seville. I think. Seville. He was a... Seville. He was a he was a tour guide, wasn't he? Yes, he was. As part, he didn't he didn't allude to that. So maybe if you've been on holiday to Spain and you had a tour guide, maybe it was the lovely Alfie Enoch. That'd have been something, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can't believe we didn't. That's one thing we didn't talk about. We talked about nearly everything else. But look, it was absolutely brilliant having Alf um, on the show today. It's really really good fun. I think everyone can learn something from this episode, which is. No matter where you're going, try and pronounce the town how the locals do. Okay, well, anyway, did you know? So, Alfie talked about how he likes to go walking, right? So, did you know that walking 6,000 steps a day can help you improve your health? But if you work the recommended 10,000 steps a day, you will walk enough to lose weight. And while you're walking, another did you know fact, while you're walking, it's good to have water, right? Stay hydrated. So did you know that hot water will turn to ice faster than cold water? How does that work then? I'm not a scientist, I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, another that. one, another one. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Next. The sentence... The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, uses every letter in the English language. What? Say again. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Very good, very good. Every one is, every letter is used in that sentence. But finally, hang I'm on, going to on. end. I doesn't need to come into it. Finally, <clears throat> I'm going to end on a did you know fact, which I'm sure some people will find very interesting. And I'd like to thank Shannon, who told me a part of this on Cameo Calls the other day. So I've alluded and gone even deeper into it. So this is about pineapples. Okay, 
Pineapples, yes. yes. Pineapples. I can't believe good. how many people think they come from a tree. I know. So, did you know? They were first known in Europe at the end of the 15th century when Christopher Columbus, he and his crew found them on Guadeloupe. This spiky crown top thing made them look like the king's fruit, so that's why he called them the king of fruit. Anyway, so in the 17th century, they were grown in hot houses in England and the Netherlands in conditions that mimic the warm temperatures that they needed to grow in. But they were in very high demand and in low supply, so only the extremely wealthy could afford them. So royalty like Louis XV, uh, Catherine the Great, and even England's Charles II had them. In fact, Charles II liked them so much that he commissioned a painting of his gardener presenting him a pineapple. So they came to symbolise luxury and the finer things in life. And this too was, pre was happening as well in the American colonies, where they were in so much demand that pineapples that were imported from the Caribbean could cost as much as $800 in today's money. But, right, those who couldn't afford $800, so you couldn't afford one, but you still wanted to look like you have got one, you could actually rent a pineapple. That's right. People could rent a pineapple to show off to their friends for a dinner party or something like that, but not eat it, just show them that they had a pineapple, then take it back to where they rented it from. And so throughout the 1700s and the 1800s, artists depicted pineapples to symbolise uh, hospitality and generosity. And so this is why if you look around London, you will find pineapples everywhere, even at the top of St. Paul's Cathedral. But eventually they became more readily available. And once they were imported to Hawaii by James Dale, he started a plantation and then exported them all over the world, which got the prices down to as low so everybody can eat them today. At one point, 75% of the world's pineapple supply came from Hawaii. So now everyone can have pineapples wherever they want them, especially on their pizzas. Thank you very much. That's my did you knows. Right. So is that why, just thinking about it, when you said that they were depicted on lots of stuff, is that why on the Wimbledon's tennis tournament, on the men's trophy, is that why there's a pineapple on the top? I've always thought that. Like, what's a pineapple got to do with tennis? Now, now you see, since I read that and I learned about it, Whenever you walk around London, especially, but a lot of other cities, but especially London, because I've seen it quite a lot, you will notice how many pineapples there are randomly everywhere. So enjoy looking at them. Jolly good. Guys, thank you very much for joining us this week. We had a great chat speaking with Alfie. We hope you guys enjoyed it too. I've been James Phelps. I've been Oliver Phelps. Guys, stay safe. Adios, mi amigos.